Hi, I'm Nate Ortiz, and this is Walking in Power. And I want to talk to you today about just the values in this company of the mind, the body, and the spirit. It's something that is principles that you guys walk out and, and live. And I just want to give a brief teaching on that with relation to the scriptures. And so in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, I'm going to read. It says, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the de destruction of fortresses. We are destroying arguments and all arrogance raised against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience obedience of Christ. All right. I'm going to stop there with the mind, body, and spirit that you guys do in the company. It is, man, it is great. I love just, you know, talk with everyone, seeing everyone on you know, even social media. We're up working out, doing what they need to be doing, focused on, uh, you know, growing themselves spiritually, all that. And so we kind of want to look at this um, on the spiritual side of things, but even holistically of what the scripture says. So as we read through that, right, we understand that God has made us into those three parts of the mind, the body, and the spirit. In, in 2 Corinthians here, it talks about the flesh, right? That's our body. It then talks about how we are divinely powerful, right? Our spirit. And then it talks about for the destruction of fortresses, which are strongholds. And then it talks about we are taking every thought captive, right? Every thought, right, is dealing with our mind. So God has made us into these three parts, right? The mind, which is our will, our emotions, the body, which is our, our flesh, right? And then our spirit, which is the image of God. So when we talk about our spirit, the Bible tells us that we are all made in the image of God. Now, if people choose to reflect that image, that is another story, but we are all made in the image of God. So I, I tell people on the call that I've talked with, and I'm going to tell you guys, you want to think of this as a three-legged stool. If you have a two-legged stool, right, it's not going to stand. Or if you have one leg that's shorter than the other, or, or maybe it's not as strong as the other ones, it's going to give way. So we have to think of our life as a three-legged stool of our mind, our body, and our spirit. And we want all three working together. We want all three as strong as they possibly can be. Because when we are deficient in one of these areas, typically what we do in our human nature is we double down on what we think we're good at. Or we double down on what is good. So we'll we'll look at the spirit. We'll say, if someone's like, yeah, we don't have a good relationship with God, or it's just kind of weak, to, and or, you know, I, I don't believe in God. They'll say, well, you know, my mind's strong. I'm, I'm not dealing with any issues there. I'm locked in. I'm, I'm focused. And they'll say, my body, like I'm at the gym. I'm taking eating good stuff. I'm taking care of it. And and still sometimes they feel like, man, there's something off. There's something missing. And to be honest, it's that the spirit side of things that you need to be in that place of saying, I need to grow in my spirit and what that looks like because all three are tied together. So when you understand that, I believe that there could be this growth and this greater depth to you as you walk this life out. When you continually double down on what you know, it actually is a weakness, right? Any strength taken to the extreme is a weakness. You have to learn that you wanna have this, this um, healthy approach to each area of your life. Because when you don't, you develop strongholds in your life. All right. Now, what are strongholds? It's unhealthy patterns that keep you from relying on God. So when you have a stronghold in your life, right? Sometimes we think about strongholds as something like being an addiction, right? That could be a stronghold. But even a stronghold is something that's holding you back from truly relying on God. Sometimes it could be a good thing. It's, it's something that's not even bad. But it's a stronghold that you say, if I let this go, I, I don't I don't even know what I would do. Right. There has to be this element that says. Yep, I can I can do both by I, pursuing God has to be part of what I do. I'm not just going to focus on what I'm good at or what brings me, um, you know, the the most satisfaction or, or what I think just is is uh, uh, appealing to people. There has to be this understanding that we need all three. So the first one I want to talk about is the mind. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove the will of God, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. So the stronghold is that we have to be careful in our mind, right? If we're not careful, the stronghold can form, that in our mind that we don't, what we replay. Oftentimes in our mind, there's things that we experience, there's things we go through, and we begin to replay these things in our mind over and over and over again. Now, there's you know science behind it and different things where as you grow and you experience different things, there are certain almost like grooves that form in your brain as how your thoughts form and how they come to you. Many times people can experience things and they can begin to replay things in their mind in an unhealthy way, and they stay in that place and they live in that place. And that's, what not, that's not what God has called us to do, that he has actually called us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind 
daily. So it's it's hard sometimes understand that we have to change the way we think, that we have to shift our patterns, that our mind naturally is going to go a certain way. We have to then bring it back to saying, what does God's word say? How do I renew my mind and not get stuck in unhealthy thinking patterns? You know, I, there was this interesting study that took place, and uh, I'd like to say it like this, that your mind is not a time capsule, okay? Your mind is not a time capsule. When we think about our thoughts, we think about, I have experienced this thing, and I'm putting it in my mind, and when I think about it again, it's going to be exactly as I remembered it. There was a study done that victims, uh, or people who experienced, I'm sorry, not victims, but people who experienced the the 9-11, um, you know, where they were there on ground zero, they were working, and they saw the planes hit the tower. They did this study where they said, all right, tell us what happened that day. What were you doing? Where were you going? What was what were you experiencing? And they, you know, they would say, I was going to work, and I remember I heard a loud boom. I looked up, or you know, people had all these different stories, and, and they wrote it down, and they were very descriptive in it. They came back a year later, and with this, this uh, study, they, they said, tell us what happened on that day in 9-11. Where were you? And the, the wild thing is their story changed from what they originally shared. Now, that seems unreal to say in such a specific event like that, how could you forget? How could you shift? How could you get the details wrong? Because as you go along this life, the thoughts, the things that you experience, the thoughts you have, you add information to it that you experience along the way. So for these people, sometimes it was news stories they heard or it's different people's accounts and they almost put it in their own story so we have to understand that we have to be careful when we think about these things that we're not adding things to them and becomes a heavy weight for us in our life but we have to renew our mind reframe what has happened right in in the light of what is God saying about it or what can I do to help me gain victory over this area you know if you watch sports one of the things that I love right is that we now have replays there's replays in football there's replays in basketball right the technology is there to see these things happen and here's the thing right sometimes the the play you know the the call will change but what happened that doesn't change. What happened, happened, right? We just get clarity on it so we can move forward. And even sometimes people still can't even agree on the replay. And in our lives, right, we have to understand that we can replay things in our mind over and over and over again. But at some point, we have to get clarity and move forward. And that could be challenging and that could be hard. But we have to do that through the renewing of our mind. So transform your life by renewing your mind to remember God's acceptable and perfect will for your life. The second thing I want to talk about is the body. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, it says, But I strictly discipline my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. If we're not careful, a stronghold that can form here is your flesh will always be addicted to immediate satisfaction. With our body, right, that's where addictions come from. That's where different things that we please our flesh, where this feels good, this is bringing me comfort, this is bringing me um, whatever that might feeling you want to put on that. With our bodies, right, we, are, we want to gravitate to those things, but there has to be a discipline that we have over our bodies that we say, what am I eating? How am I taking care of my body? The Bible refers to our body as the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? This is an important, it's not going to last forever, but this is important that we have to be good stewards of this, that we have to be in the place to say, I can, I can be an example, right? That I'm not just saying, hey, you should live a healthy lifestyle, but I'm not doing it. That I'm having the discipline to know when I need to stop uh, doing this or developing bad habits, you know, whether it's sleeping habits or whatever it might be, or substance abuse, whatever. We have to understand. We have to take care of our body, and you know, God did not design us for immediate satisfaction, but sustained stewardship. Right? How do we take care of ourselves? How do we make sure we're the best? healthiest version of ourselves. We all get excited for new, right? We love new things. We love the smell of new things, the experience of new things, but you have to take care of those new things or they're gonna get worn down just like everything else. So how are you taking care of those things? Stewarding your body or the desires of the flesh, uh, you have to get to line up to God's will even when it's challenging, even when it's hard. So whatever it looks like for you, so maybe it's working out, maybe it's developing that, maybe it's, you know, Get, getting that going for your life. Maybe it's developing better sleeping habits. Maybe there's some things that you need to cut out of your life that are unhealthy. Uh, you know, maybe it's addiction issues or different things like that. Right? You want to to get rid of those things in your life so you can really walk in the fullness of what God has for you, and you can set that example for people around you. And the last thing I want to talk about is the spirit. 
In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. As I said earlier, with our spirit, it's amazing that we can sometimes begin to think about God in a certain way and saying, well, God understands how I function and God w- w- wants this for me. I'd say it like this. In our spirit, we are, we are image, images of God, right? That God did not send his son, Jesus, to die on the cross to, to raise again just so he can say, everyone just stay the same, right? No, there's this understanding that we have to be reflecting the image that is God. You know, think about it this way. Right, the, the moon, the moon's authority and power does not come from itself, right? The light doesn't come from itself. It comes from reflecting the sun, right? The, to move the tides, it's being lined up with the sun. In the same way, our lives have to be lined up to the son of God, that we would say, Lord, in my life, help me to stay lined up with you, that I'm reflecting who you are, not just for myself, but for the people around me, that the people can see that there's something different about me or even sense there's something different about me. Romans 8, chapter 11 says this, The Spirit of God who raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. Right? His Spirit lives in us. It lives in you. How are you growing the, the spiritual walk that you have? How are you reading his word and applying it to you? How are you aligning to it? So I want to ask you this, this question in closing. Where do you need accountability and discipline? Where in your life, in your mind, your body, your spirit, where do you need the most at? I believe when you have the accountability and discipline, that's a great one-two punch to help you grow, right? When you have the discipline to do something, that's great. But also you have the accountability. So when you are maybe struggling or you're going through a hard time or you're doing something that's out of character, that's not lining up with God's word, that someone says, hey, that, that's, that's not who you are. That's not what you're striving for. And, and same with your body and your mind, right? Who is that person to say, hey, I love you enough to tell you, man, you're, you're, you're getting off track here. And so have that accountability and discipline and you know, develop that consistency in those three areas. And so I encourage you um, as you listen to this podcast to even take some time, take out a note, notebook, put it in your phone and really be specific about those areas with your mind, your body, your spirit, where you need to grow and how you align with God's word so you can be the best, uh, the best version of yourself and be the reflection of God to the people around you that need him most in this hurting world. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time on Walking in Power.